This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. To me, the saddest thing about the Parker Fly is that for a guitar that looks as it does, which I think aesthetically is one of the most bold statements you could make out of a guitar that wasn't a Wangcaster, right? It's kind of pretty bonkers looking, right? The real shame for me is that I think 
aesthetics are getting in the way of, or were getting in the way of people trying these things out because actually this is quite a mind-blowing instrument to actually play. Um, I'm reminded of playing that Joe Satriani JS1200 of Tony's from Up the Road. This belongs to my good buddy Dr. Elphick, um, who's owned this guitar for a long time. And as you have to say, it's kind of like the guitar only a mother could love, right? Um, Ken Parker designed this bad boy. It's got some really modern kind of features to it. Um, lots of stuff which is fairly unique to this guitar. A headstock that would go on to be sort of co-opted by, what's the name of that brand? The metal brand, Black Machine. Um, they would do this sort of thing later on. Spurzel locking tuners. A carbon fibre neck with stainless steel frets. These stainless steel frets, although they must be sort of 20 years old, maybe more, feel amazing under the finger still. Yeah, I don't know. There's just so much to like about this. This, to me, sort of feels like what I'd imagine a Strandberg should feel like to some extent, in that it feels really modern in the hands, but is actually super playable as well. Um, I think these pickups, from what Chris said, were made to kind of emulate the DiMarzio, Air Norton and Tone Zone. There's some wacky electronics going on. You've got a P80 in here as well, which is what I was using in the intro for the kind of acoustic part. I put it through my Helix acoustic patch and then switched over to what I think are actually some really, really nice sounding pickups there. I was mostly using them in split coil mode. For me, that has got that really beautiful glassy split coil sound that I actually really like from an Ibanez RG, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah. Uh, Chris did want me to tell you about the story of Eddie Van Haler, Haler, Halen, and the Parker Fly. Um, and apparently you can find photos and I think even footage of, of Eddie playing the Spanish Fly on a Parker Fly, um, conveniently enough. And um, there was a time when Ad Eddie was playing one of these. I guess this could really change the fortune of the company. Um, but he was asking for essentially ownership of the company. Um, to promote these guitars or you know a huge stake in the business which uh didn't suit ken and so that partnership never really came off of course eddie van halen uh had plenty of other things going on right uh, i think endorsements with music man which eventually would kind of go away um and then the evh brand with fender um PV as well. I think before that, maybe Soldano, then PV. Um, so we did knock around a bit, but I think it would have definitely been a fairly different world if this kind of body shape had, had taken off. If you've never given a Parker Fly a chance, and you probably might be somewhat like me in that there's something about the way it looks that is so alien compared to things that are traditional, um, that it kind of looks out of place on most gigs, right? I think, I remember when I was a kid, there was a local blues player, Dr. Ika, um, that used to, to play a Parker Fly. And even back then as a kid, it kind of looked a bit bonkers. Um, I know that Keith from Five Watt World used to play a standards gig on a Parker Fly. And one of the things that he says is, no one ever mentioned that this guitar looked out of place on that gig. So, I think it's one of those things where if you're brave enough to, to show up with one of these and you play half decently, people aren't going to particularly even notice, maybe. But, um, yeah, for me, it, it looks like the sort of thing that might turn a few heads. But as I say, amazing kind of feeling fretwork, really slinky feeling trem. The electronics just work quite nicely. I'll, I'll show you through it now. It's got uh, some active electronics. Um Essentially, this way, we're on the piezo. If we switch to the middle, we got both magnetic. And then if we switch to this way, we're now only.
Now we're only dealing with magnetic. This is quite a cool sound. It does to me look like the sort of thing that you could see someone like Ted Green or, or Lenny Barreau kind of adopting. I don't know, something about it gives it that vibe to me, especially when you think about some of the sounds that are kind of available. And then all magnetic here. We split right now. Split bridge. And now if we get rid of the split. A really kind of nasal mid kind of throaty bridge pick up. Middle position. Piezo kicking in now.
I mean, I'm sorry. Um, it's just making me want to play the guitar, and that's, I guess, what a great guitar should do. Uh, it's, it's not at all aesthetically what I'd look for in a guitar, but I think that's the shame with the Parker thing in, in a way that it's such a sleek feeling, beautiful guitar. This is the 22 fret bolt on model um, that really is amazing to play um, and is, I don't know, really inspirational. So I think it's a great shame that more people will never try this sort of thing just because of how it looks. Because um, I think it's a pretty phenomenal instrument. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Have you tried one? Are you a fan? Um, thanks, Chris, for letting me borrow this piece of really interesting, kind of quirky, fantastic gear. Cheers.